So today I have traveled to Columbus, Ohio, and I'm hanging out with a longtime Facebook and internet friend of mine, Trevor Boggs, at a studio that he works out of, Weird Music Studios. So this is actually pretty cool because it's the first time that Trevor and I have gotten to actually meet in person, even though we have talked and communicated over Facebook messages uh, for years and years. And uh, so finally getting to see the place where he does his work is really, really cool for me. And he's gonna give us a full tour of the place. They got two rooms, an A room and a B room, plus a fantastic live room. So let's go ahead and meet up with Trevor in the control room and kick this thing off. This is Studio A at Weird Music, and this is Trevor Boggs. How's it going? And uh, you're gonna be showing us around, so this is pretty sweet. Let's just start right here at what everybody's gonna wanna see first. We've got this really cool, this is a Midas Heritage? Heritage 2000, um, I think early 2000s. Okay, model. early 2000s. Yeah, uh, acquired it from a broadcast truck somewhere out in LA. When we got it, we immediately started cleaning it and replaced the dreadful BCA automation battery. It was the first thing we did before even powering it up, and I'm glad we did because... What was dreadful about it? Is it just hard to replace? Well, uh, it's prone to leaking. Okay. Um, and Midas didn't really tell many people about it. Okay. It's also a soldered in battery. Okay. So, uh, luckily we caught it right, be right before the leaking stage because if it leaks, the whole console was dead. This fader pack controls everything. Even though we don't use it, if the battery is dead, it doesn't work. Okay. So, but um, aside from that, great sounding input section, direct outs on everything. We just run it straight to our, our quantum conversion and then back in. Half the console's for input and the other half is just for, uh, you know, returns. Okay. Because um, we didn't really need 56 inputs. <laughs> and without, right. without being on full TT or quarter inch patching yet, it just would have been a nightmare trying to figure it all out. Yeah. We, we just have it split, input, and return. Most returns are only going through the last four over here anyways. That's just for playback. Yeah, we occasionally use it for mixing. We don't use it for summing. We occasionally will run back in and you know, do some patching for, for mix sessions, but most of the stuff is mixed in the box. Gotcha. Are you, when you're tracking, are you running, um, are you EQing on the way in or are you using those Midas EQs? I'll, to... I'll EQ on the way in. Um, I love, you know, committing on the way in. Yeah, me so, too. That's so the I'll, only way to fly. I'll EQ either on here or over here on the island. Yeah. Um, Which we'll get to. The island is super, got some super sexy stuff in it, yeah. but we'll get to it in a second. Yeah, but the... The, the preamps are just so musical. I love to drive them and then, you know, back out the, uh, the direct out trim. I'm not clipping the conversion, but yeah, I absolutely love those pre's and those EQs. If I can get them in 500, I probably would and just get rid of the console. Mm -hmm. Are you summing stuff together? Like a few mic, you know, two, three mics on your kick drum, will you sum it down to one channel on the desk? Do you do anything cool like that? Uh, we can. Unfortunately, the, the summing is a little noisy. Okay. Because we, we, we need to get that section of service, so... Right. I prefer not to. Um, I like to capture as much of the kit itself with the EQ and the pre's, and then, sure. I, then I'll, you know, I'll use my my summing mixer or you know, sum through my Apollo at home and then back yeah. in. So. Yeah. <clears throat> so tell us about the monitoring you got up here on the meter bridge. We got uh, three sets of speakers. Yeah, we have some uh, some, some baritone C five A's, which are pre Avantone. I think. Uh, Behringer purchased either Ortone or Avantone recently, and so those things weren't on the market for much more than a year or so. Okay. Then the LYD8s from Dyne Audio, the classic NS10Ms. Yep. Uh, for the NS10s, we're running an Alesis RA300 reference amp. So what was this before it was weird music? Uh, originally, it was Rome Recording, which was a huge bluegrass uh, studio at first. The original okay. owner was really big in the bluegrass scene. It was built from the ground up as a bluegrass studio. Okay. Um, and then over the years, it's changed hands multiple times. Some churches have owned it. And so eventually, we're trying to restore it. Okay, Back cool. to the original designs, but with modern 
you know, modern gear and everything else, but it's been fun. It's been fun going through some of the, uh, the quirks and changes done over the years. So first of all, let me just yeah. say that uh, I'm actually really enjoying seeing this in person because when I added a, uh, I guess, a, I don't know what you call it, like a credenza rack like this to my studio. I call it an island. You, you and I talked about yeah. it a, a, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I thought long and hard about building my own, and then I ended up with an out and uh, made a purchase. So, But you built this yes. and brought it here. So uh, so walk us through some of the gear. And it looks really nice. It's, it is it is really cool. I'll just sweep around here real fast. Yeah, thank you. We've it's got about the, 200 uh, hours total to build it. We've got the adjustable the sliding out keyboard tray right there. Which was a last minute idea, but I'm glad I did it because I didn't realize how tight the top of the, the bays were going to be when I had just a fixed top. Ah, yeah. Yeah, because when I when I built it, I had you know just a, a basic top over top of it, and then I, I went to play the piano. It just felt weird leaning over the rack. Yeah. So I just you know put some some rails on. I'm like, oh cool. Oh I yeah, actually, makes it way better. Yeah, I can get to it much better. So that's pretty cool. The back panels, of course, are the same size as the front. So if we ever needed to, we can add rails in the back. Load more gear, gear on the back side. Cool. Uh, so so yeah, walk us through some of your favorite pieces to use here. We don't have to go through. At necessarily everything, because some some folks have seen some stuff here, mm -hmm. but there's a couple of things that I think people aren't going to be familiar with, and you and I were talking ahead yeah, of time, yeah, yeah. and those um, are uh, I think those are worth talking about for sure. Yeah, my favorite pieces of gear, um, honestly, I love this BBE Maxcom on kick and snare. I mean, it's very modern, so it works really well for like hard rock. I love that guy. Don't mess with the Clark EQs much. Those are Poltec clones, I guess. Yeah, Poltec clones. They can, you can get them to sound good. I just don't like them. But uh, ISA Mark One Four Twenty Eight, love that piece of gear. Um, four channels of M Audio DMP Three, very very transparent, and clean with a ton of headroom. Okay. Those are like you can find them for about I think a hundred bucks for, for per unit for two channels, so not terrible. Okay. Um, but these guys, great sounding EQs. Very, very uh, high headroom. Okay. Like, I'm always padding, even on SM7B, I have to put on the pad. Wow. Because otherwise it just puts out so much gain. That's, uh, that's actually kind of a cool, might be a cool hack for some people that are looking to get SM7 for their home studio and instantly want to think Cloudlifter, but, uh, you know, if you get a good pre with a lot of gain, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't need a Cloudlifter. Yeah, there's, there's a ton of gain on those. They're pretty clean, too. Um, one unit's a little noisy, but it's the one unit that doesn't have gold caps in it. Okay. So all, all the other ones I've bought are all, all modded from the same guy with gold caps. What else do you love using from this rack? Anything else um, that we can talk about? I mean, I love some of the, the, the multi-processing stuff. It's not currently patched in, because all of this was patched in when we had an M32 console. Yeah. And, of course, getting the heritage required more cabling and, and more planning. Like, we have a... We have a whole bay of TTs that we got to wire in, but we yeah. need to actually, you know, come to an agreement on what we're we're putting in because it's 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 all. There's four different guys that work here, right? Yeah, it's not yeah. Just, yeah. We have six engineers total, but four guys use this room. Um, I like the uh, this is an SM Pro, which I think Black Lion took it over. It's an eight channel optical optical comp. Okay, I like that guy. It's a fixed four to one ratio. Eight channels of compression, just right there. Mm -hmm. All balanced quarter inch, so yeah. And it's SM Pro Audio? Yeah, there? SM Pro Audio, who got bought out by Harman AKG about four years ago. Okay. On the lav mics, you can probably hear uh, some of the ambience on our voices. So yeah. I would say this is a pretty cool room for drums. Yeah, and that's, and that's with this giant rug. Yeah, this room is why I'm here. Is this, uh, is this the spot for drums right here back against this wall, or have you tried them? Have um, you tried it everywhere? I've tried it everywhere. I like, I like about right here. And then if I roll up the rug and do a spot rug, I like it just under this light. Just under the light. The middle, um, I don't like it so much because I, I think we need a cloud. There is a standing wave about you know, 12 feet up. Gotcha. But aside from that, yeah, it, it sounds great. I usually put my, my Blum line or, or mid-side room mics right here. A mm -hmm. couple back there by the door. Yeah. So you got some nice stuff to break up this room, though. It's not completely—it's mm -hmm. not four parallel walls. That's uh, that's one of the reasons I'm adding uh, 
adding an ISO room to mine is to have yeah. not, you know, not so many parallel surfaces. I'll tell you the other thing that I'm really jealous of is this huge, this huge window here. Yeah. That um, makes it real nice. From what we've we found out at one point, this this wall was not flat. And it actually went back because if you look, there's three panes. And so they pushed one out. Unfortunately, this pane right here is dirty on the inside. Mm. And there's, is there access into there? Like, can you pull those inside panels out uh, and get in there somehow? No, we'd actually we'd have to remove these two on the outside and somebody would have to slink in. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. So that's are, a little bit of a bummer. But Those are the things we're finding out about the history of this room. Yeah. Then we got the ISO, which I usually throw like you know, uh, some vocalist in there, bass cab. It was designed for gated uh, reverb drums in the 80s. Yeah. That's why the... Oh, yeah, it is dead as a doornail in here. This is amazing. Yeah, that's also why the, why the glass is so short, too, is so the drummers can actually look out into the room. Ah, uh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Really were these already here? Did you build any of these gobos? Uh, they were built, yeah. These ones were, were bought from my extra storage at home. Okay. Threw those up. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty dead. Um, so I, do you do any live tracking too? I've done, a, I, I do a lot of live tracking yeah. mainly out of here. Yeah. Like especially at the start of the pandemic, we were doing you know, just live streams. Yeah. Left and right. We're the first studio in, in Ohio to actually do a, a Facebook Live. Really? And then everybody, cool. everybody started picking up. Like one of the, uh, the live streams is actually uh, co-sponsored by Rock Hall. Oh, really? Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, and then a lot of bands started saying it, it's a way to still, you know, connect with fans and make money. And, and unfortunately for us, we couldn't keep the video guy yeah. on, on hand because he, he, uh, he got a huge offer to move to Colorado. <laughs> now he's a video guy for Red Rocks. Oh, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. Y'all must have done something right then with the with the live streamer. He he was doing his job right for sure. That sounds yeah. like that's awesome. Unfortunately, all the, all the other guys that we talked to about taking over that position wanted like one to two K just to provide the videos. Yeah. So what do you guys use this desk for in here? Um pre-production. If we want to do like, you know, single in the room studio type stuff with uh yeah. with, with bands, that way. The control room can still be rented out yeah. for other things working in here. Or I actually love coming in here um, and doing one-on-one -on -one vocals. Like after we track out there, uh, I'll bring the drive over and yeah. just do vocals right here. Yeah, that's cool. And you got uh, a couple sets of Callies here. Yeah, the uh, eights and the sixes. The AR-16 is new. We had an M32 here with a much bigger desk. It was taking up so much space. This is nice, though. I've not seen this desk before. What is this desk? I don't know. Um, Max, one of the this other guys. This is way better than the like Studio Trends ones that Guitar Center sells. Yeah, we originally had, um, it was a Omnirax or a Raxus DB8 desk for the okay. M32, and it was huge. And then it was taking up so much space that we tore it down. Um, Max had this old eight unit Rab desk, mm -hmm. and his buddy bought this off of Amazon. It was like 600 bucks. But his buddy was moving to a small apartment. It wouldn't fit, and you just trade him straight up. Oh, it's so nice, though, because the uh, you can fit the two sets of monitors. You've got some rack stuff there. But mm -hmm. then, like, especially for me, like, I, I have my, my home desk. is one of the Studio Trends ones from Guitar uh -huh. Center with the rack stuff is all in the middle. And so my 27-inch, like, video editing monitor uh, is on the top, mm -hmm. and then my laptop is on the bottom. Uh, but it's just super annoying because it's like, I, if I ever was going to do some more stuff from home and use those racks... Or like I've got a drawer where I put like extra hard drives you and cables move and stuff. All your stuff. Got to move the laptop yeah. out of the way. This is great. I, like, I, I love that it's an angled back desk. It's it's fully open. Yeah, and it's like six hundred bucks. It's like it's like one of the first things you see on Amazon. I've never heard of it, of it until it got here. They still sell it. Yeah. Okay. I, I I don't know the brand, but it's it's within the first page search. It's better than the Studio Trends, in my opinion. Oh yeah. Like this would have been a desk I would have definitely wanted, you know, six years ago before I started. Like building and and oh yeah, expanding on my studio. Yeah, this is uh, this is cool too. We should talk about this really quickly because people may ask us some questions. So you've got some stuff, uh, you got some acoustic treatment behind these slats, mm -hmm. and then these are just is this a pattern? Or are they just randomly placed on there? Uh, one of the other engineers here, Trevor Edge, uh, he looked up just some uh, formula. Okay. Online, he told, and he just put in what type of wood we wanted to use. We used the cheapest, like one by twos we can find. Yeah, these are. This is just like basically fairing, yeah. fairing strips or whatever. Yeah, because this room was completely dead. Because that's just 
it's about three inches of just of Roxel. Yeah. So it was it was too dead for the size. So he figured that out, and, and it, it just told him the math, and so he went and bought the wood and, and put it up. Um, we'll probably end up changing it to better wood because being a furring strips, they do bow. Yeah. But that was done in an afternoon, and it livened the room up. And then the, the monsters here on the corner were a happy accident. These were just sitting in the, in the control room covering up the soffits, but they were causing too much uh, low-end resonance. Moved it out here, and they're acting as uh, resonator boxes. Oh, cool. So it's actually, it actually helps the low end on the kick drum. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, this room is surprisingly, uh, like, you definitely hear the liveness, but it's also, like, it's a very pleasant sounding. Yeah, there's no flutter. Yeah. There's no, like, long decay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a nice size, or nice sounding live room. Yeah. And eventually the plan is to, uh, back where that black tape is and the stands are, is to actually make two 412 Cabin ISOs. Oh, that'll be cool. Just to slide in there. I've already ran some of the wiring through the wall. Yeah, and again, if you if you do more live tracking, that'll be great because mm -hmm. then you can just have everybody's got their stuff right there. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's been. I, I usually don't have two guitar players, but at my at my spot when we're doing live tracking, having some kind of way to ISO the 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 cabs is oh, it's yeah, so critical. I mean, even if it's a combo, you know, we'll throw a combo in there. But luckily, the bleed is very minimal between rooms that we can throw a combo in the hall. We can. You know, run a long cable and, and yeah. put a combo or, or an amp in another room. All right, so we've got this little hallway outside of the live room. Yeah, this hallway is designed to for for room miking and for like an extra decay or delay. And it's really cool if you throw a mic up either in that corner. It's just a great mono sounding room mic, especially if you just just squash it and just barely oh, put yeah. it in. Yeah. Yeah, because this is the opposite. The, the echo that's out here is the opposite of what we're hearing in the yeah. know, the, the reverb from the live room. This is definitely that uh, you know, like you walked into an empty house in a subdivision or like a model home or something with no. It's got that. Yeah, it's more spanky. Yeah, more spanky. But this is cool. And and with that being, so I don't have a high ceiling in my hallway. I'm super jealous of this. This yeah. is awesome because I do the hallway mic all the time though, mm -hmm. right outside the door, and I'll even. Like just barely crack the door. Oh, it's so useful. It makes drums sound massive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wish we can actually pull some of the gear out of here. It'll it liven up even more. But oh yeah, still though. Yeah, this is this is sick. So weird music is definitely a place that is home to uh, loud rock drums for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's show us this B room. All right, so this is the B room. Yep. You work out of here some too. Uh, sometimes for for some rap artists. Um, this okay. is mainly what this room was built for was like a singer songwriter production uh, hip hop rap room. Because that brings me to a question that I was going to ask a minute ago. What all kinds of stuff are you guys working on here? I mean, basically anything. Is there something we, we that do anything, you but, don't do? Uh, not really. I mean, with you know six engineers, we, we're pretty much pretty wide on the spectrum. Okay. But you know, room A is big. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes a little too much for just a. A, a solo rapper. It's also the more expensive room too. So, yeah. so this was built. Uh, but you still got all the things in here. I mean, this is yeah, this I, is cool. You got this Cranborn rack with yeah, a finished, ton of sweet five hundred stuff in it. Yeah, I finished this room uh, last September is when, when I finished building it. This is I think I feel like see, I know what your stuff sounds like. Some people are gonna yeah. have to go and check it. I'll put a link in the bottom. But uh, the, I think this is a testament to how cool these are because you got all this. Much more high end bougie stuff right here, but another VTP one made it into the uh, made it into the B room. So. Yep, I used the VTP to get that uh, LA six ten sound between all the rooms, and I have another VTP at home just for consistency. And I really don't want to lug my my six ten around everywhere I go, so that's why I bought those. So VTPs. what you're telling us is if we can't find any VTP ones on Reverb, I probably bought you them got them all. <laughs> you got them all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's the five or six here, and and one more at home, and then the uh, the valve comp for the VTP stuff is at home too. So, are these the uh, are these the three way Callies, or are those the are those two ways? Those are actually the Mark II three ways. Okay. Yeah. Which are relatively new, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we picked up the the Mark ones, and then twenty days later or something like that, they announced the Mark twos and. And the guy, Max, who actually pulled the trigger on those was so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> he had to call... Uh, call Sweetwater? I think he got it from Zounds at the time because they were okay. the only ones in stock. But yeah. In this room, you guys got some good treatment built in here mm -hmm. too. You got the corner traps. You got the 
The wall panels. The wall panels are good. That's a good. Uh, yeah. Is this like a, a, a Joann's or Michael's kind of a thing? Yeah, uh, it was, a, it was fabric. quickly thrown together. Um, we actually found more of the marble fabric that's on the corners. Yeah, I really like the to, marble to stuff. To make more panels. We bought the, the last that was in all of Ohio. Mm. So the plan is to actually make more panels, but we're doing 18-inch wide panels instead of 24, so we can actually place them more and actually go over onto this wall, too. And then you got the vocal booth in here, and is that the Slate mic? That is a Slate M01, yeah. It's a low noise mic that works really great. I have actually the Chandler. Sounds really great on the Chandler. Oh, cool. <clears throat> Very cool. I forgot about this. I walked in here earlier before you got here. Well, the, and uh, I was checking the, uh, the PM8 out. Is this a summing? Yeah, it's a yeah. summing mixer. It's now um, it's an SM, another SM Pro piece of gear that Black Lion was putting out for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you find them, it'll either be a red panel or a black panel with slightly different knobs. Um, they do, oh, okay, I have seen this. They usually go for about 1200 from Black Lion, but if you find the SM Pro stuff, same thing to a T. You can find it for about 400 So Black Lion wasn't actually uh, modding theirs, they're just rebadged? They're just re rebadged, like, <laughs> like, like, like same as, I mean, the PG-1 is the Monster Pro 2500, just rebadged and they took the bezel off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so a lot of black that? line stuff is rebadge. Okay, I didn't know that about the PG one. That's a good. That's mm -hmm. a good. That's a good pro tip there. Yeah. So, alrighty. All right. So, Trevor, I want to wrap this up in the uh, in the control room. Tell us a little bit um, about just some of the projects that you're working on, some of the stuff that you like working on, uh, and then also how people can get in touch with you if you want <sighs> them to. If they want you to produce their record. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, if they want to check out some of the stuff I've done, um, I have multi-genre portfolio on the studio's website, which is weirdmusicstudios.com. Okay, and we'll put a link to that down below. Yeah, uh, stuff I like working on, honestly anything, as long as the artist is passionate. Great. Like, I, I don't like working on, um, you know, mixtapes over YouTube beats, because a lot of times that's, you know, a, a quick track and go type thing. I want to actually work with people who yeah. want to expand on their projects. But if they want me, and willing to spend time with me, then I can, uh, then absolutely, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love doing the, the production side of things more than just the tracking side. I'm not one to just hit record and say, here's what you get at the end of the day. Yeah. If, if that's what the artist wants, then I usually recommend them to somebody else. Well, and that's what's really great about a big room like this with, uh, with a lot of different gear and a lot of different flavors is that this is, this is made for that kind of, uh, that kind of work, so yeah. that kind of project. Yeah, I mean, if the artist is willing, you know, to audition pre's, audition mics, find what's best suited for that song, then absolutely. Um, if they want to want to quickly come in and track, we'll throw them in B if we have to. Yeah. We always keep that mic up in there, but yeah. Uh, so we got a lot of options. Got a yeah. lot of options to do some stuff here, and uh, and you guys got a lot of gear, microphones, amps, and I mean, there's just stuff all over this room, and it really is a great sounding. Great sounding live room, so. Thank you, yeah, and uh, usually if it's booked well enough in advance, if an artist absolutely needs something, I most likely have it at home too. Yeah. Uh, if there's a specific mic we need, I either hit up one of my other you know, recording buddies and yeah. see what they have, or if we have to, we'll rent out, rent out an amp, um, but most of the time people are just going through the Kemper or the Axe FX now, yeah. which isn't here, I bring that with me if I have to. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, dude, thanks for showing us around. Thanks Thank for doing you. the doing the tour. And uh, and if you guys have questions for Trevor, uh, leave them down below, and uh, I'll make sure he sees them. And we'll uh, we'll uh, leave you links to his stuff.